Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that second tropical disturbance because our first one has already made landfall and it became Tropical Storm Danny, believe it or not. We're going to talk all about that within this video. So first off, for today's comment of the day, I want to know what do you think is going to happen with this second tropical disturbance? Just give me an overview of what you think is going to happen with that one in the middle of the Atlantic. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's just go ahead and take a look at Tropical Storm Danny. This was actually from 5 p.m. yesterday when it became Tropical Storm Danny. So I had to go on the Facebook page of the National Hurricane Center and find an older outlook here. And as you can see, it became a tropical storm right offshore of southern South Carolina. There it had maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. We only expected 45 mile per hour gusts to be possible, but it had 45 mile per hour sustained winds. So this is just absolutely just an overperformer to say the least. Now I'm going to compare this hurricane season so far to 2019 and to 2020, and it's actually going to be a little bit concerning here. Now this doesn't mean anything because things can turn around in a hurry, but let's take a look at where we're at so far. We had a storm A in May, and then Bill, and then Claudette, and then Danny. So we're A, B, C, D there by late June. Likely it's going to be July before we see another one. Uh, but if you compare this to 2019, which was an above average hurricane season, might I add, we can see that we were only on C by late August. So it took all the, we, we didn't even have the B storm until the middle of July. So we are well ahead of 2019. And then 2020, which was, by the way, the most active hurricane season of all time. And we're right on pace with this one because we had the D storm right towards the end of June. And that's where we're at right now. So we had A, B, C, D by late June. And we're basically right on pace with that. And I might even add with this next tropical cyclone we have, where there's likely an above a 50% chance that we see another tropical storm. We might even get that E storm where last year we had it on, I think June 6th or sorry, July 6th or July 7th. We might even get it earlier than in 2020, if not right on pace. I think we are right on pace with 2020. And if we get that E storm, we will continue to be right on pace with 2020, which is obviously a very concerning look considering how active last season was. This is overall just making me even more confident that this hurricane season will be an above average one. And it's very bad to see us right there with 2020. Hopefully things turn around though. Here's the two day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have post tropical cyclone Danny there over Georgia. That one is gonna kind of curve around and head back into the Atlantic. Don't know if that one will redevelop though. We do have a 30% chance of tropical development there with our next tropical disturbance, which is looking very good at this point, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the satellite imagery, the five-day outlook. Then we're going to start talking about spaghetti models and things like that. So here's the, the satellite imagery, and this one's looking really good. Like I said, this one looks organized. I feel like this one could be a tropical storm today or tomorrow, honestly, uh, if I'm putting my two cents in. Unless something starts drastically turning around for this one and it starts to weaken, I think this one is very close, actually, to developing, in my opinion. Here's the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see that cone just goes straight towards Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. They're keeping the possibility for this one to go south or north of those regions. If it goes north, that does pose a bigger United States threat. So we're going to want to watch from Florida all the way up to the Atlantic coast of Canada there. Anywhere in between there could get impacted. Although with the current pressure systems, it does seem like there is the possibility this one, if it does go north of those regions, it could go out to sea, which would be an even better scenario, obviously, for everybody involved. If it does hit Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, obviously that's going to be an impactful storm and we're going to need to watch that as well. And then if it goes south of those regions, it could break up because that's an unfavorable region. But for now, they have a 40% chance of development. Let's take a look at that European model's probability of tropical depression. And as you can see, we have about a 80 to 90% chance that this one will become a tropical depression there in that darkest orange shade. Here's the probability of tropical storm. And within that kind of mint green color, that's where we have a 40 to 50% chance of tropical storm status. About 50-50. This one had a 0 to 10% chance of tropical storm status. 
for our tropical disturbance that became tropical storm Danny. So the fact that this one has a 40 to 50% chance tells me it might be even higher than that, considering it's been a little bit undervaluating uh, some of these storms so far. And here's the probability of tropical depression once we get kind of to the longer range. This is days four through five or July 3rd through 6th. This one, according to this model, will be located south of Cuba, most likely, maybe impacting areas like Jamaica or the Yucatan Peninsula there, possibly heading towards the Gulf. And there is some probability of tropical storm because it'll be at about a 10 to 20% chance of doing so by this time frame. Now for the spaghetti model guidance, here's our GFS ensemble model. And as you can see, this one has it mostly going south of Puerto Rico, then potentially hitting Dominican Republic and Haiti. Some of these models have it making it north of those regions after crossing over, but that is kind of a death sentence for storms like this because of those mountainous regions in some of those islands. The Canadian model here has this one going south of Puerto Rico as well. It does have one crossing over Dominican Republic into the kind of like Atlantic eastern seaboard area there. And then there's one that takes it hitting Jamaica, then Cuba, then the panhandle of Florida kind of. A uh, very interesting track there. I think it definitely would struggle a lot if it took that track and it would be a weaker storm. And then we have two hitting the Yucatan Peninsula. So this one is really all over the place. But here's the individual models. And these ones are a lot more focused and they have a better, they kind of like have a better uh, confidence, I guess you could say, because they're all showing a very similar outlook here. Most of these have it hitting either Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, or Cuba, and then kind of going over the Bahamas and then curving back offshore of the East Coast. These models usually go back and forth and I don't expect them to stick with this one solution. I expect them to change a lot. But that is interesting to see them in such good agreement. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance, which is very interesting at this point, by the way. And it looks like this one will become a tropical storm. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance. And as you can see, literally two models have this one not becoming a tropical storm and they kind of just have it drop off very quickly. Every other model has this one quickly becoming a tropical storm within the next 24 hours. And some of them even have this approaching hurricane status. But over the next 168 hours, they don't really have this one weakening at all, except for one of those, the MNIC model. And I'm not exactly sure which model that is, but at about hours 132, it has it sharply dropping back off. So I'm expecting a landfall potentially or something that leads to that happening, obviously, on that model, which I don't really have access to what that model shows exactly. Uh, but I'm sure it's something along those lines. Let's take a look at the cyclonic vorticity because I'm going to show you something that's actually concerning as well. Our cyclone is actually located kind of towards the middle there. It's really hard to pinpoint, uh, but in the middle of the southern Atlantic there, so kind of towards the bottom right, you see there's three red dots. It's the very furthest west one or to the furthest to the left there. Uh, that is our current disturbance. But as you can see, there's basically just a train of different disturbances coming off of Africa. And it's actually because there's some some warmer sea surface anomalies south of Africa that are influencing all of those areas there in northern Africa that are basically our storm producer. That's where they come from, the first signs of the disturbances. Now, by the time we're re reaching hours 54, our dis current disturbance is near the Lesser Antilles, but we have another disturbance moving in towards that region, quickly following it. And then by the time we're reaching hours 99, this model has most of these breaking up, but we see more disturbance coming off of Africa by the time we're reaching July 3rd. So this just never stops. And here we are by July 4th, and you can see still a lot of disturbances there uh, offshore of Africa. By July 8th, same thing. So I don't think this is going to stop, guys. It does not look like this is going to stop anytime soon. It just continues this freight train of new tropical disturbances. And this is common. It's just not common in early July. It's common for this to start happening in August or September. But I think what's happening is we have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures surrounding Africa, and that is leading things to be warmer than normal, closer to the conditions that you would expect to see in August and September. Now, if this continues all the way through August and September, look out because we are going to have a far above average hurricane season, like guaranteed if that happens, obviously, if it just continues doing this. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a three out of six because of the fact that this storm has a long way to go and there's many different things that can happen. But I do think there's about a 50-50 shot of this one becoming a tropical storm at this point. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think will happen with both of these disturbances? And 
C7 weather got the first one so right that I decided to include this. Number one pulls a Bertha forms right before landfall 40 miles per hour. And tell me that isn't super close to what actually happened. That was 21 hours ago before 5 p.m. So C7 weather definitely got that one right. Number two, which is the one we've been talking about in today's video, once it gets to the lesser Antilles, it forms and dissipates over the Bahamas 50 to 65 miles per hour. So we will see if you're right about that second one. You certainly were about the first one. Good comment of the day there. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnez, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary's, John Quilisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crunenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below. That helps me out tremendously as I'm trying to pick this channel back up. Obviously the springtime is a slow time of year, but we're moving towards the more active times of year, like hurricane season, fall time when people start getting excited for winter, and then obviously once the winter's here, the snowfall. So things are going to pick back up, but I need you guys' help to lift things back up uh, and just get that algorithm going. Thank you guys so much for all you do. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.